Welcome everyone to Monday Morning Morons for April 23rd, 2018. This week, let's begin with dogma. The same old tired ass dogma we've been hearing for years. Why some modern women oppose women's rights. You can see right from the jump where this is going. We've been dragged down this rabbit hole more than once. It's the same old bullshit dichotomy they always fall back on when they're challenged. But my dictionary says, if you oppose feminism, then you oppose women's rights. Because feminism is just about women's rights. And of course, women's rights are whatever we say they are, so you can't oppose us or you hate women, you fucking misogynists. For years, we've heard this same argument from the YouTube bedroom feminist crowd. Well, cheer up, folks. The bedroom feminist crowd is now writing for the mainstream media, and we get to hear it all again with an official stamp of approval behind it. In the past decade, feminism has been hit with some serious backlash. And it's not just coming from men, many women are against it too. All completely out of the blue, too. Totally undeserved criticism of our holy scripture from women-hating mobs of misogynists and their brainwashed sympathizers. We feminists have never said or done anything even remotely deserving of all this criticism. All we want is total superior, I mean, equality of outcome for people who don't work, hang on, I think I done screwed that all up. Let me start over. <clears throat> all feminists have ever wanted is total equality of the genders. All 74 of them at the moment with more to come just as soon as we make up a word and a pronoun for them. We want to end all discrimination of any kind against anyone except, of course, the evil heterosexual white men who are totally undeserving of any compassion or understanding because, well, I mean, just look at them. You're fucking a white male! It's not like they've ever done anything to deserve what they have. They've never worked a day in their lives. They just stole everything from us women who have never had anything because they wouldn't let us. Um, yeah. And they took everything from poor helpless people of color who absolutely cannot do anything for themselves unless we help them because they're totally not inferior to us in any way so they need all the special treatment we can think of heaped upon them in order to succeed. You know, equality. <laughs> for her book, F-Bomb, Dispatches from the War on Feminism, author Lauren McKeon talked with a range of anti-feminist women, from those who championed Gamergate, the movement that harassed women in video game industry, to those working for a return to traditional housewife roles. Uh-huh. I think you mean Gamergate, the movement that advocated for ethics in games journalism and criticized pushing games to the top of the recommended pile because the creator offered blowjobs in exchange for a nice puff piece to sell her game. The movement spawned in response to a feminist army descending upon their hobby and accusing them all of despicable crimes to shame them into accepting the feminist god as their lord and savior because they had the audacity to question a woman. The movement, who has had hit piece after hit piece after hit piece written about them for years, refusing to even acknowledge one thing they actually advocate for because they dared to challenge feminist dogma. Now, as much as I would love to refute the rest of this article, I'm afraid I can't do so fairly. The rest of it is Jennifer's takeaways from Lauren McKeon's book, and I haven't read it, and I'm not going to read it either. I don't buy opinion books from people I agree with. Sure as shit not going to buy them from people I disagree with either. When I want to hear opinions, I watch the news. I will agree with at least one quote she provided at the end, though. McKeon said that while she disagrees with these women, she wanted to air their concerns. I do think it's important to not let such views metastasize unopposed, she said. Exactly. Bad ideas don't go away when you ignore them. They spread unseen, and the next time you look, it's fucking mainstream bullshit, also known as feminism. What's next, Bob? Student op-ed calls black conservative example of tokenism. And Uncle Tom again? Didn't we cover this shit last week? <laughs> hmm. Bob says this one's different. Somehow I doubt it, but let's have a look. The Texas State University student newspaper published yet another racially provocative piece Tuesday accusing a prominent black conservative of being a token black woman for conservative students. 
because her opinions just couldn't possibly be her own or anything. It's just inconceivable that a black woman might have conservative views unless she's got some internalized racism or some shit, right? She has diverged from the hive mind. Quick, call her names. Brand her a heretic. <laughs> With the wave of social vocalism, specifically by or on behalf of minorities, the illusion of diversity is important for every organization to maintain a favorable public perception. Temi, I'm not even going to try that, begins the op-ed, which was published in the print edition of the University Star. Diversity statistics are often highlighted to prove faux inclusivity, otherwise known as tokenism. Diversity statistics prove faux inclusivity. So if my group excludes minorities, it's a racist group. But if it includes minorities, they're just tokens so we can pretend we're inclusive. Huh. So include or don't doesn't matter. Everything is still racist until we agree with you. Is that what you're saying? Giving the example of a white person deflecting charges of racism by claiming that my best friend is black, Temi claims that the school's Turning Point USA chapter similarly tokenized Second Amendment advocate Antonia Okafar by inviting her to speak about gun rights after a student government representative accused the group of perpetuating this false sense of inclusivity to make itself appear up on their diversity quota while not addressing issues affecting minorities. <laughs> I guess that is what you're saying. These horrible racists invited a black woman to speak just to prove they aren't racists. But because she didn't speak about the things you wanted her to say, she's just a token. Rather curious that when a black person happens to agree with conservatives, they're an Uncle Tom or a house nigger or a token or whatever other disparaging name you can think of to call them. But when they agree with you, they're totally just individuals seeking empowerment. It's almost like you're saying political motivation is the important thing here, not skin color. Okafar told Campus Reform that while Temi gives a great definition of tokenism, this is the very reason I left the Democratic Party, asserting that legal gun ownership is empowering regardless of race or ethnicity. By Temi saying comments like this, it's hurting the African American community, Okafar said. White people shouldn't be the only people allowed to defend themselves with a firearm, and it's racist to say so. Don't sweat it, Antonia. She's made it quite clear it isn't about race at all. It's about ideology. You don't share hers, so she's trying to shame you back into line by calling you names. She's trying to take away your agency and discount your individual perspective because she has defined you by your skin color. We know who the real racist is in this story, and it's not Antonia Okafar. What's next? Professor called racist for trying not to be racist. <laughs> this should be good. In an incident of public shaming, an anonymous student working on the theater project for Pomona College's theater and dance department posted several posters on buildings throughout the campus accusing a faculty member, Pomona College theater lecturer Rose Portillo, of being racist for asking the student to not include songs with the word nigga in them for an upcoming production. On Tuesday, April 17th, I was organizing song cues for one of Pomona College's theater department's upcoming productions. My professor, Rose Portillo, walked up to me in class and said, nothing with nigga in it. I said, don't say that. She said, I'm saying it. The student concludes the poster by stating, Don't raise it! <laughs> you know, for people so inexplicably obsessed with racism, you'd think they'd at least know what racism is. Evidently not, but let's look at it from the teacher's perspective. If she allows lyrics that have the word in it, if she asks students choosing the music to exclude songs that have that word in them, Don't raise it! so she's fucked if she does and fucked if she doesn't. The current state of race relations in America, folks. And then they sit there and complain that we can't have an honest conversation about race in this country. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> All right, Bob. Toxic masculinity time. 911 operator who hung up on emergency calls is sentenced to jail. 
A former 911 operator who hung up the phone thousands of times on people attempting to call in emergencies in Harris County, Texas, has been sentenced to jail time. Kershonda Williams, 44, was found guilty of interference with emergency telephone calls Wednesday after systematically hanging up the phone on residents of Harris County. She was sentenced to 10 days in jail and 18 months probation. Williams reportedly had an unusual number of short calls, which were no longer than 20 seconds. Prosecutors, according to the Houston Chronicle, determined she hung up on thousands of calls. In one instance, emergency caller Jim Morton told KTRK he called 911 in 2016 after he spotted two vehicles speeding on a highway where people had been killed from speeding weeks earlier and thought his call was dropped after a few seconds. Court documents, according to the news station, stated that Williams had taken Morton's call and, before he could finish explaining his emergency, she reportedly said, Ain't nobody got time for this, for real. The dispatcher also hung up on a caller who tried to report a violent robbery, according to the Chronicle. Ain't nobody got time for that petty shit either, apparently. The citizens of Harris County rely on 911 operators to dispatch help in their time of need, Assistant District Attorney Lauren Reeder said in a statement. When a public servant betrays the community's trust and breaks the law, we have a responsibility to hold them criminally accountable. Williams' attorney, Franklin Bynum, argued that his client was going through a hard time in her life when she hung up on the emergency calls and said punishing her doesn't do anything to fix the problems that still exist in the emergency call center. It's unclear what problems at the center Bynum was referring to. Yeah, she was having a bad day, man. Apparently hundreds of bad days. Cut her some slack, yo. She spends all day, every day, under the harmful gaze of the omnipresent white supremacist patriarchy. That's hard, you know. Ain't nobody got time to worry about no damn robbery and reckless driving and shit. She's got real problems, you shit lords. Just another example of the school-to-prison pipeline holding down another strong, independent black woman who didn't do nothing. Literally, she didn't do anything. Not even her job. <laughs> okay, let's wrap it up with a laugh. D.C. council member apologizes for blaming snowfall on Jewish bankers controlling climate. <laughs> A Washington, D.C. council member apologized Sunday evening after he blamed a snow squall on a well-known Jewish banking dynasty. In an Instagram post, Democrat Trayvon White apologized to the Jewish community and anyone I have offended. White made the comments on a Facebook video, which was shot Friday morning through the windshield of a car driving through downtown Washington during snowfall. Man, it just started snowing out of nowhere this morning, man, White said, according to the Washington Post. Y'all better pay attention to this climate control, man, this climate manipulation. And that's a model based off the Rothschilds controlling the climate to create natural disasters they can pay for to own the cities, man, he, he added. Be careful. Ah, I see. He's one of those people. <laughs> The Rothschilds are a European family that once possessed the largest private fortune in the world. Their banking businesses provided the financing for government projects such as the Suez Canal. Their wealth and influence has made them the subject of several conspiracy theories, most of which are anti-Semitic. I did not intend to be anti-Semitic, and I see that I should not have said that after learning from my colleagues, White said. He added that he was working to understand the history of comment made against Jews. I don't think you owe Jewish people in particular an apology here. I mean, what you said isn't anti-Semitic, it's just anti-Rothschild. You're just perpetuating another crazy-ass conspiracy theory against the only big-name rich people you could think of at the time. Blaming a Jew for something isn't the same as blaming all Jews for something. I'd say the people you should apologize to are your constituents. I'm betting they didn't know you were a fucking loon when they voted for you. <laughs> That's it for this week, folks. Remember the social justice mantra. Women are victims, men are oppressors, and feminism is just about equality. I'll see you all next time.